Hi Year 11, so this is a tutorial looking at paper two, question five. Um, I'm going to go through a model and explain to you why it's successful. Then I'm going to show you how to apply that model to your own writing, but also make sure that you understand what you need to change about it to fit the different needs as to whether or not it is a letter, a newspaper article or a speech. So some of you may have seen this in your English lessons recently. And um, I'm just going to go through the model that was created by Tom Needham. So this is a letter and the letter is in response to the child labour question. So it starts, dear Mrs Smith, I'm writing to inform you about the horrors of child labour. Please listen to the story of Lakshmi. Wearing nothing more than tattered rags, her skin covered in filth, bruises and grime, Lakshmi struggles under the weight of a huge box that she is carrying through the warehouse. It is 10pm. Lakshmi has been working for 12 hours with no break, no food and no safety equipment. Her sandals provide no protection from the heavy weight she lifts. Her employers care little for her welfare. Her family haven't seen her for over a year. She is a slave, imprisoned in a relentless cycle of toil, abuse, neglect and suffering. She wishes she could escape. She wishes she could see her mum. Sometimes she wishes she were dead. So I'm just going to stop for a moment to explain a few things for you. Um, firstly, you can see here that it starts with Dear Mrs Smith. That is obviously the greeting and you would need that greeting if you were going to be writing a letter. If you are being asked to write an article, rather than starting with Dear Mrs Smith, you would simply need to use your headline and your strap line. Remember, your headline can be derived using the main points of the question and your strap line can be created by writing a five word sentence that explains the headline that ends in an exclamation mark. If you're being asked to write a speech rather than starting with Dear Mrs Smith, you might start with Good afternoon. And then if you were being asked to write a speech to Year 11 students, you might write something like Good afternoon, Year 11. The next thing just to bear in mind is that this letter starts by saying I'm writing to inform you about the horrors of child labour. If you are writing a speech, then you might change I'm writing to inform you to I'm here to talk to you about and then you would carry on with the horrors of child labour. And if you were doing a newspaper article, um, you might say something, um, you might need, you might choose to cut out this bit altogether and you might just start with, please listen to the story of Lakshmi. Whatever you do decide to do, the key sections of this example that I'm going to go through with you today will always remain the same. So whether you're writing a newspaper article, a letter or a speech, the main body will always be the same. You can use this format throughout. OK, it's just the bits at the beginning that you need to be mindful of. So here you can see that this example uses a range of different devices. We've got a short sentence here and we can see how this short sentence is being used for effect. We've got a tricolon here, which you'll notice starts with a repetition of no. Now, obviously, that repetition of no highlights to us the really awful conditions of child labour. We've also got anaphora being used, which is where we have the starts of sentences being repeated. And you can see here that this is all done for effect. This means that straight away in this first paragraph, we can see that the student is doing some conscious crafting. Remember, conscious crafting is something really important when it comes to this question. You can also see that um, this example, they've taken care to ensure that they're thinking carefully about the vocabulary. So here we've got filth, bruises, 
and grime. Here as well, we can see we've got slave, imprisoned, relentless. We've also got toil, abuse, neglect and suffering. Every single one of those pieces of vocabulary are used very precisely to help uh, have an impact upon us as readers. Likewise, by using tattered rags, it's tugging on the heartstrings and it's helping to drive that point home. So you need to be really mindful that when writing these types of, um, of writing, you need to be careful to include really powerful vocabulary. All around the world, young children, just like Lakshmi, are exploited, maltreated and abused. So here we've got a tricolon um, of sophisticated vocabulary, again, to have that emotive impact by callous adults who are only interested in profit. Imagine your child had to work 14 hours a day. Imagine your child was beaten, spat out and treated like an animal. This very moment, children are enduring a living nightmare, a torturous hell that they cannot end. Should we stand back and tolerate this? No. Should exploitative employers be allowed to continue with impunity? No. We need to help the helpless and care for the uncared for. Childhood should be a time of joy, not suffering. So here we can see that we've got a short paragraph which is being used for effect. Remember, working in some variety of paragraphing can be really powerful. You can also see here that we've got some figurative language being used, living nightmare and torturous hell. And also we can see that this use of imperative for imagine, that's really going to have an impact on us as a reading. You can see here as well that we've got hyperphoria, which is the answering of the rhetorical question. So there's lots and lots of devices that are being used effectively here to convey our point. And so far, we've got three paragraphs that have been written. And like I said before, this structure would apply to any of those um, question types that we've talked about. Instead of a gruelling day of torturous work, children should be in school. Instead of being spat at by abusive and violent adult employers, children should be cared for by compassionate and tolerant adults. Children should live with their families, not their slave masters. It is the right of every child to go to school. It is the responsibility of every society to ensure that they go to school. If young children are working, then society is failing. As an MP, you can make a difference. You can help children like Lakshmi. You can help stop this horrific exploitation. So as well as these devices that we've got listed down here, you can also, again, notice the deliberate use of vocabulary. We've got gruelling, we've got torturous, abusive and violent. You can see here that we've got compassionate and tolerant responsibility, horrific exploitation. You'll also notice within this section, um, the model is putting forward almost a solution. So if we just stop again, you can see that we've got a personalized story here talking about an individual. Then we have a section which makes the problem wider. It explains the wider problem, including this one paragraph down here. And then we've almost got um, an ideal world, an alternative, almost a solution to the problem. And then in this next section, you're going to see that the model comes back to that person we've been speaking about at the beginning. The next time I see Lakshmi, I would love to see her smile. I would love to see her carrying books to school without care in the world. I would love to hear of how she's been reunited with her family and how the adults in her life show compassion, not malice, nurture, not neglect, love, not abuse. And you'll see here that we've got antithesis being used. So we've got what we don't, sorry, what we do want uh, contrasting with what we don't want, okay? And this is that personalized returning to the story. We then have a small call to action. Please contact the Indian government and pressure them to change. Lakshmi needs your help. And then we've got the correct sign off for a letter. Your sincerely, Tom Needham. Now, if you were writing a newspaper article, 
you would just take this section out. OK, this can remain absolutely as it is. If you were writing a speech again, this call to action could stay in as it is. And you would just need to finish off with something such as thank you for listening. So we don't need to do very much at all to our main body to make it fit for purpose. So this is a structure that I would strongly advise you working in to yours. So you would always start um, with your very brief intro. You'd then have a personal story almost as if it's about a character that you've invented. Then you would explain the wider problem. Once you've explained the wider problem, you would go on to show the ideal. Or you can think about this as being the solution to the issue. And then you need to return back to the personal. And within that, you're also likely to have a call to action. That's where you're going to be encouraging somebody to do uh, something to make a difference. So let's have a look at how this might work for a different question. So the question we're going to look at is here. Heavy users of social media are less happy and have more problems at school and home. Write a letter to your local newspaper arguing whether or not you think this is true. Now, the first thing that I want to point out with this question is that it's telling you to write a letter to your local newspaper. This means it's a letter format that you need to write and not a newspaper article. OK, we've also got here heavy users of social media are less happy and have more problems at school. So those elements are the bits that we need to be writing about and answering in our question. So let's get started. Now, obviously, we are writing a letter, so we're going to need to make sure that we set the letter out correctly. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got your name and address up here in the top corner. Now, there's no need to write that out in detail. Um, you would just write your name or, or your name in itself. And then you could just put um, street name, city, postcode. You don't actually have to write it out if you don't want to. Then on the other side, leaving a line, you write the address of the person that you're writing to. So we're writing a letter to a newspaper. So I'm just going to do the editor of the Birmingham Mail. And again, I can just put street address. Birmingham. And then I can make up a postcode if I want. It doesn't matter if it's correct or not. Underneath that, I'm going to leave a line and I'm going to write the date and I'm going to write the date out in full. So that's Tuesday, 2nd of May, 2023. And then I'm going to leave one more line and I'm going to write the name of the person that I'm writing to. So I'm just going to write to Dear Ms Smith. And you always need a comma after the person's name. So if you remember, we start by saying uh, sort of the reason why we're writing. So I'm going to start with it is with. I'm going to use the word despair here. So I'm really thinking about the way that I'm feeling. So it is with despair that I write to you. regarding problems encountered by young people 
you spend far too much time. You spend far too much. I'm actually going to put off their precious time so that I'm sh continually thinking about my vocabulary of their precious time. Um, tweeting, TikToking. And twitching. Please listen to this story. Oh. Sidra. So let's just take stock of what I've done successfully so far. So firstly, I'm showing the examiner that I know how to use uh, commas correctly. You can also see here, I'm thinking about my vocabulary. It's despair that I write to you regarding the problems encountered by young people who spend too much of their precious time. And here you can see that I've used some alliteration, tweeting, TikToking and twitching. So I'm showing an awareness of the situation. You'll also see that I've continued to use punctuation correctly. And then I've put, please listen to this story of Sidra. Now, in actual fact, I'd be better off using a colon there to introduce my next idea. So in this first paragraph alone, there's three different types of punctuation that I've used correctly, and I've used a range of vocabulary that could be considered um, you know, consciously crafted. So if you remember, once I've done my introduction, I need to go ahead and I need to be using my personal story. Now I've said here that my personal story is going to be about Sidra. And so I want to try and get us thinking about this individual. So I'm going to start by explaining the situation. Sitting alone in her room, Her nails bitten down. Her hair covering her face. Sidra struggles to remember a time. When she was not alone. OK, so if you remember in the previous one, at this point, they tried to use a short sentence. So I'm going to use that as well. I'm going to state it as a fact. Sidra is 12. And I'm trying to use this for sort of shock factor and for emphasis. Sidra has been homeschooled. Now I'm choosing to put homeschooled in inverted commas um, because I want people to realise that perhaps it isn't Sidra and her family's choice to homeschool her. For the last 14 months, and now I want to use brackets to include some additional information. If you didn't want to use brackets, you could choose to use um, parenthetic commas. Um, but, you know, what we want to do is show the examiner we can use a range of punctuation accurately. So using brackets uh, would be wise. So almost all of her time at secondary school. And then if you remember in the other example, um, they used um, a tricolon of negatives to show what this individual is missing out on. So I want to try and do the same uh, for my example here. So I'm going to say she has no specialist instruction. That means teaching. Um, no lunch times chatting with friends. Hmm. 
no access to PE or art. So I've tried to think of some negatives of not being able to attend school. And now I want to use a rhetorical question to further engage my reader in the plight of this individual. So I'm going to put the reason for her isolation. And then I'm going to go ahead and answer that. And I'm going to say social media. Or rather, the abuse she has received online. And I just want to finish this off by um, using another tricolon here, um, but also a bit of anaphora. So I'm going to say, she wishes we had not logged on to TikTok that day. Stop. She wishes she had never uploaded that video. Um, she wishes her bullies had not seen it. So let's look very quickly at what we've got um, in this paragraph. So this is our personalised story. So we've got sort of emotive language being used, sitting alone in her room, her nails bitten down, her hair covering her face. Sidra struggles to remember a time when she was not alone. Sidra is 12. So we've got that short sentence. Sidra has been homeschooled for the last 14 months. And then we've got those brackets, almost all of her time at secondary school. There's no specialist instruction, no lunch times chatting with friends, no access to P or art. The reason for her isolation? Social media, or rather the abuse she's received online. She wishes she'd not logged on to TikTok that day. She wishes she'd never be uploaded that video. She wishes her bullies had not seen it. So again, we can see that there's some really deliberate devices that are being used. We've got that anaphora here. We've also got the tricolon specialist. No lunch times, no access. OK, so it's looking at building in as many of these sort of devices as you possibly can. So let's keep going. So in our next page, uh, sorry, in our next paragraph, we want to talk a little bit about the wider problem. So now we're not just thinking about Sidra who experiences this, but we're thinking about children up and down the country. So that's how I'm going to start up and down the country. There are countless young people suffering like Sidra. So we've just got a little nod there back to the personal to remind us. And we've got some deliberate vocabulary in the form of the word suffering, just to make sure that we're tugging at the heartstrings. Um, so let's explain that a little bit more. So let's change that into a comma. Who experience, let's think about the negatives, who experience name calling. And we want to be shocking if we can. Violence and bullying in real life. of what happened online. Now, one thing I really liked in that previous example was that use of imagine your child, because I think that really hits home. So I'm going to borrow that as well. Imagine 
your child unable to attend school? Uh, because they were afraid of children who used to be their friends. And one of the things that I thought was powerful in that previous extract was using imagine twice. So I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to say imagine and I'm going to use a tricolon. Imagine your child being kicked, punched, and spat at um, just because. A video posted was disliked. So again, I've got that sort of double use of imagine, just like we saw in that example, to highlight it. Now, I want to try and use some of that figurative language that we saw in the previous example. So I'm going to say, like Sidra, children all over, I'm going to keep it local, I'm going to say the UK, all over the UK are living this nightmare. So again, there's some figurative language there. Now, another thing that I really liked was the way that in the previous model, they used rhetorical questions and answered them as a way of highlighting the issues and what was wrong. So I'm going to borrow that idea as well. Should we really allow children to be ostracised? I think I'd spell that then ostracized from real life because of an online mistake. No, and I'm going to put an exclamation mark there just to show off another type of punctuation that I know how to use. Should children. under the age of 16 have unrestricted social media access no and again another exclamation mark um so i'm going to now use a one sentence paragraph just to kind of emphasize this again. I'm going to use one of those um, sentence structures that you have seen mentioned in some of the previous videos, which is the show me dot 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 and I'll show you. So show me a happy and content child and I'll show you a child who has limited access to social media. So what we've done so far is we've got our introduction, we've got our paragraph that highlights the, um, the personal issue, and then we've got this which pulls out the um, the greater problem. If you look here, you can see as well that we've got a range of punctuation being used again accurately, um, including here the exclamation marks, the question marks. We've also got this figurative language. 
And, you know, again, we've got this use of imagine your child, imagine your child, just to really um, hammer home what we're trying to talk about. We've then got this one paragraph, sorry, one sentence paragraph. So the next section that we need to do in our letter or our article or our speech, doesn't matter what we've been asked to write, we can use this same structure, is we need to think about the ideal situation. So the solution, if you will, or the alternative that we would like. So I'm going to start here with instead of spending eight hours a day glued to their phones, children could be outside with friends. So I'm giving the issue and I'm offering the solution or the alternative. I'm going to use a bit of an after again, so I'm going to use instead again. So instead of obsessing over the lives of fake Instagram influencers, children should be laughing. Think. Uh, let's highlight friends again. Like laughing with friends. So here you can see that I've repeated some ideas at the beginning and at the end. So that we can see the real juxtaposition as to what the situation is and what we want the situation to be. Children. Children should uh, be spending time, should be spending time with their real life family, not strangers on a live stream. So here we can see that I've continued to give that balance of ideas. So I'm using contrast here to really try and highlight that for the readers. Um, I'm then going to borrow something else from that one that we looked at where we outlined the fact that it's the right of children and the responsibility of adults, because I really liked the way that was put together. So it is the right of every child to be a part of their school community because that's the issue that we're talking about here the fact that these kids are isolated their school community and then i'm going to say it is the responsibility of every community to make sure, let's put to ensure, to ensure that every child is safe. So again, we've got that um, idea, it is the right of every child and then we've got it is the responsibility of every community so we've got a repeated idea here to create a pattern and i want to just kind of hammer that point home by saying that if children are unsafe online children are unsafe online then we, as a society, are failing. 
and use an exclamation mark again just to show my displeasure at this and again just to show that I know how to use that punctuation correctly. See here I've used a parenthetic comma to create it. So finally I want to um, return to the personal issue but also place a bit of a call to action. So I'm going to say the next time I see Sidra, I would love to see her smile. I would love to see her laughing. I would love to see her in school, surrounded by friends. So I'm presenting in my return to the personal, the ideal situation. I'm going to say that Sidra deserves friendship, not isolation. So again, I've got the use of contrast here and I've got that anaphora. I would love, I would love, I would love. OK, and you can see that there's some deliberate vocabulary choices here. Um, friendship, not isolation. I feel like I can build on that, like in the first example. So uh, what also could we say? Education not exclusion and love not abuse so now we've got three lots using that idea of the antithesis friendship education exclusion love abuse okay so finally now we just need our call to action so i'm just going to finish that off by saying Please help your children. We've got some direct address there. Your children to recognise the dangers of social media. And then, because I know the name of the person I'm writing to, I'm going to sign off with yours sincerely. If I don't know the name, I would be using yours faithfully, and then I would put my name. OK, so there we go. Using the exact same structure as the first example, you can see that I've successfully written um, a letter. Now, just to take you back, if I wanted to be writing a newspaper article, I would not need the names and addresses. I wouldn't need the dates and I would not need dear Mrs Smith. Instead, I might start a newspaper article with something along the lines of social media. Colon. Hopeful. Or harmful. So you can see that I have used the exam criteria, sorry, the exam question to create that. And then my struct line, um, I'm going to just say something like children are suffering as a result of heavy social media use. And if I end that with an exclamation mark, it makes my idea really clearly. Then if this was a new paper, newspaper article, obviously I wouldn't need any of those sections. And I might talk here. So it says it is with despair that I write to you regarding the problems encountered. Well, I could probably get rid of that and I could then just start with the problems encountered by young people who spend far too much time far too much of their precious time treating TikTok and so I, that's all I would need to change and then obviously at the end um,
at the end, I would just finish with that call to action. OK, finally, if this were a speech that I'd been asked to write. Um, so again, I wouldn't need these parts. Um, instead, I might start with good. I don't need that. Good afternoon. Parents. Um, and then I might say I am here to talk about the problems encountered by young people. Again, nothing else would need to change. And with regards to the ending, the only thing I would need to change is I need to say something like thank you for your time. So nice and simple. You can see there how we can take the same structure and we can apply it to letters, we can apply it to speeches, and we can apply it to newspaper articles. I hope that that has been useful, um, Year 11, and I wish you the very best of luck.